It's time to gather as the AFL heads to Adelaide and the Bombers square off against the D's. This is the Sash, definitely not the official podcast of the Essen Football Club. Coming to you from Castaway Studios on a Thursday, which is rare for us. Usually we're doing the uh, Over the Satellite, um, but I'm happy to have Mert in the studio with me. Hello, mate. Yeah, mate. Right. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Uh, how are you on a Thursday? It's usually Mondays that I, I see you. Yeah, I know. It's a bit different. It's good. I like it. Should keep it up. Yeah, keep it happening. Definitely keep it happening. Definitely keep it happening. And uh, a special guest, friend of the program. We share the same studio. Host of the debrief, Adrian Horton, aka Northsy. Hello, mate. Mate, it's good to be in. I'm an intruder, of course. I've been on this uh, show before. It's a pleasure, and uh, I feel bad. I've done Derek, uh, our master producer, a bit of a disservice because you've referenced Castaway Studios. We love this space, and I probably probably haven't referenced it in the past three shows, Derek. And he's yeah, he's given me the uh, <laughs> yeah the donuts. So well done to Rob. Yeah, you're obviously a uh, absolute professional mm. and a master of your craft. Yeah. Yeah. So, so well done. Yeah, I was looking at our finances today, so I was making sure we did the shout out. So they're looking good. <laughs> <laughs> um, good to have you here. I feel like the last time we did this, I was on your show, and Nuggets and Adzi were let's let's be frank, um, shit eyed, and. I don't think we had a constructive conversation at any single point. So hoping we can raise the bar a fraction tonight. Um, I mean, we'll degenerate as it goes on, of course, but hopefully we can you know, have some thoughts, have some ideas, You know, get a bit Brett Kirk on the whole thing. I hope so. It'd be good to um, dig that one out, actually. And just, and Maybe not. <laughs> just have a casual listen to it one day. But um, I was going to preface just before, like you can bin me at any time. So last season on our podcast when... Uh, Tom Marcazzani, who's a panellist, was living over in Frio. Mm. We used to dial him in randomly on our Thursday preview show with the boys. And uh, we had this thing, it was kind of like Graham Norton style, where Nuggets would like reach over and just bin him at the most <laughs> inopportune moment. <laughs> like we could be like three or four minutes into the conversation with him and he'd just be like, I'm sick of him. Let's you, get rid of you him. You just never give Nuggets that power. And so no. somehow he always ends up getting it. Mm. No, I know. So anyway, so... By all means, you can do that to mm. me. I haven't got a red button to press, but I do have some beer bottles around me, so I could just throw one across the room. <laughs> yeah, let's if, do that. If, if required, if required. And because this is video, maybe you could just throw the uh, screwdriver at me. Oh, there is also a screwdriver here, which we may or may not have used to open said bottle previously. <laughs> um, so shout out to everyone on YouTube who's who's watching there. Um, but you, you know you know where I went to get these? Where? I went to Liquorland. <laughs> Good man. <laughs> this isn't even part of part it's of the ads. Joint. This isn't there, but I went went through the drive through in Thornbury and I picked these up on Mate, the way. We so. love Liquorland. So the beautiful thing is, is like oh, I always I always walk past Dan's. It's just down the road. And I'd, I'd, no, ne- no, no, no. I'd never go in there. I, I wouldn't go. I'd never go in there. I wouldn't go. In there. See how expensive the beers are in Dan's these days. Oh mate, compared to Liquorland, <laughs> <I'm> disgrace. <laughs> it's a sh- <laughs> you just wouldn't catch me dead in there, mate. It's yeah, an, it's an absolute disgrace. It's shocking. Did you enjoy the Smitties? Last year? I did. Yeah, they're good. Yeah. I actually bought some more from Liquorland yeah. over summer. Yeah, they're underrated. Yeah, they're, they're good. good beers. Yeah, they're good I'm, beers. I'm big on them. We'll man. have to send an invoice for this conversation because it's not part of the contract. No, so. mm. no, it's um, not. It's been a great start, boys. Great yeah. start, great start. Flybys. Uh, yeah, flybys. Let's, um, flybys is good. Yeah, yeah. let's <laughs> let's talk about the game. That's, uh, that's what we're here for. Maybe uh, let's just get your thoughts on... Melbourne as a whole, the season. Let's be honest, your your premiership favourites. There's a lot of expectation riding. Are you embracing it, or are you kind of nervous? Going, oh no, we might cock it up. Where's where's your head at? Uh, not really nervous. It's it's so early into the season. I think last year the ten and zero run, it got blown out of proportion a little bit. It's easy to say that as a Melbourne supporter uh, when you're sitting pretty, you've won 17 in a row as we did, but I didn't actually think we played particularly well in some of those games. I actually hark back to the game we played against you, I think round three. Mm-hmm. It was neck and neck at one point. You blokes were looking really good in the third. I think it was a Petrarca, probably an Oliver, that just said, no, we're going to take this game away from you. It was and that goal by Langdon. Yep. That's right. Yep. Yeah. On the boundary. Yep. And we just put the we put the afterburners on only for a little period of time. And that mm. was pretty much what broke the game open. And you you blokes weren't big on confidence oh, was, coming into it. We were playing the uh, Ben Rutten gag and press, as I call it, which didn't really work at all. But I, I recall <laughs> it being a shocking game, though. Like It was kind of well, like a four goal to four goal up to three quarter time kind of <clears throat> predicament. So, yeah. Um, 
yeah, not not the best game we've ever seen. But that's what you get with Melbourne Essendon games in recent times. Real, remember that one where Joe Danaher kicked like eight oh, behinds? He was one. He yeah. was, was one Marvel six as well, oh. bro. <laughs> he, he was one six, I think, up to half time. And you guys yeah, had right. us on a string but at the, one point. But the the one goal that he kicked. It was taken back after he'd missed it from the boundary. <laughs> and then he goes and he salutes the crowd. Yeah. Because he's oh. the biggest knob known to man. No, it was really it was really weird. So I think like a couple of things here, like Melbourne Essendon games, never a great spectacle. For whatever reason, I don't know why. They're just not no. high in quality. No. And then for Melbourne's sake, just talking about the ten and O that I was before, I I just I think we got a bit ahead of ourselves. I think mm. we got a little bit cocky and arrogant. I don't see that in our DNA, in our makeup this season. I think we're hungry again. Our tackling pressure has been through the roof. Um, our pressure gauge has been through the roof, which uh, David King and uh, Lee Montagna obviously love on the first crack. Mm. It's their uh, biggest modern day game indicator. It's an mm, important yeah. one though. I think the I think the fire and the I think the the hunger is back within this team, and I think there's a a humble nature to Melbourne again. I think we definitely got a bit arrogant, got a bit of ahead of ourselves, a little bit complacent. Yes, we got curtailed by injuries and we're a bit crooked in those finals. But looking back on it, we didn't deserve it. The mm. second half of our year last year was deplorable. We were mm. six and eight. Yeah, fair That's enough. That's the reality. Yeah. Mm. The way we're sitting now, we're happy, we're content, we're not firing on all cylinders, yet we've had three wins by 50 plus. Yeah. And I guess this year as well, you've got some new faces, whether it be young guys or more experienced guys. And sometimes that little bit of new energy, something different can excite other guys. And whether it's someone competing for your spot that suddenly go, oh man, I've got to lift my game because this person's here. Or just, you know, a young guy came in the door is just excited to play footy and that mm. you're just going to get that love again. Judd, um, Judd McVeigh sounds like they couldn't decide between like a McVeigh or a McPhee. And so they came up with McVeigh. <laughs> yeah. What's the deal there? <laughs> I don't know, but uh, we, we've coined the name Chris because oh, of, of Chris Judd. And of uh, it didn't go d- down well with his family. So uh, anyway, we'll keep calling him Chris. <laughs> what, what did they call you, did they? <laughs> I, just, I don't think they enjoyed it, but uh, we'll gloss over that one. Oh. Um, but he's been a revelation. And he's someone that's plied his trade at VFL level last year. We heard a lot about him coming through the ranks um, from Casey. Similar story, and Rob makes a, actually makes a great point. Um, Kay Chandler is another one that's mm. had to bide his time at reserve level. Jacob Van Royen, very highly touted mm. uh, key forward. He's come in, second-year player. He's having an impact. We were very dirty on the team not blooding some of these players last year. Mm. However, <clears throat> they look like geniuses now because they've been able to develop and nurture and grow at VFL level, and now they're actually having a huge impact in the seniors. So I think the proof's in the pudding. Geelong have absolutely nailed that strategy Mm. over the journey. And I think any team that rewards form, but also is patient enough and doesn't Mm. throw them in, um, it's, I think it's, you get your just desserts and that's Mm. what we're seeing from some of these, these younger players. And it elevates some of the, the older players. Like there's nothing better than seeing an Alwyn Davy Jr. come in and have a massive impact. I know he's out for this week and it's disappointing given it might be wet. He would have been a real threat to us. Uh, but you've got guys that are in like third, fourth year, like an Archie Perkins that are starting to make a huge impact. Um, and you've got a lot of youth in your team. Those guys certainly have a huge impact on the senior players as mm. well. Like mm. they just give them a massive lift. So Melbourne have embraced that this year. I've got a really quirky... Um, stat for you a little bit later about the comparison between the two teams but sure. I'm stoked that Melbourne have finally bought into the idea of promoting these players that have been playing well at reserve level yeah I think uh, look at least in the, uh, at least in the way that he speaks in press conferences Brad Scott seems to be very much like that at Essendon he's big on playing a person when they're ready whether that's ready as a development from the VFL or ready coming back from injury it's all about you know bringing guys into success and you know I'm sure through both clubs, we can think of countless examples that we've brought in people who are either underdone through injury or they're just not quite ready for senior footy yet. yet. And yeah, they've been crap. And then they get dropped or they re themselves or whatever the scenario is. And that's just the pain. And, you know, we all love the sugar hit as a, as a, as a fan on a Thursday being like, oh, this guy's named. Oh, man, what could happen? Blah, blah, blah. But, you know, sometimes patience is uh, the best way to go about it, which can be hard when you don't win a lot. You've been patient for a long time, though. Mm-hmm. Too long. <laughs> <laughs> that's the perfect. Certainly that's have. the perfect reaction. Yeah. Right? Yep. 
Thoughts? The, the Mert the Mert grunt is synonymous with this podcast. Synonymous, mm. isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Mm, mm. yeah. There it goes again. <laughs> I'll, I'll put it to you because, like, this is a this is an Essendon podcast, and you don't want to hear me rambling on about Melbourne. But you're a month in. Brad Scott, I for what it's worth, I think it was a great appointment. He's tough. He's uncompromising. He doesn't shirk any hard decisions. He doesn't give a shit. He doesn't care mm. for sentiment. I think he's been great. You're banking wins. Like some people say, it's a kind fixture list. You've gone and played some of the cat and fodder that sit in the bottom four at the moment, but you've gone out and you've won. Yeah. So mm. I think you've made a really encouraging start. I actually think Brad Scott will be fantastic for you in the long term. Do you, do you agree with that sentiment? I think he's already changed a lot of things at the club. Um, I, I agree with you about I think he's the right man as far as attitude goes, as far as uh, demanding and commanding a certain air of authority about him. Um, I think he delivers a message really well. And if you saw how he responded to uh, some of the things that were thrown to him uh, on Footy Classified, for instance, on um, I think it was Monday night, mm. he just responds so well. He shuts things down. He keeps his message simple. And that's certainly what some of the players have said as well. Um, I know in the past that's been an issue. So, yeah, I've been – personally, I've been quite um, – yeah, certainly very happy with him. I think the other thing is – he certainly changed things from a tactical standpoint. Like you can, I know some people on Fox Footy have said that nothing's improved. It clearly, clearly has improved substantially. Um, and yeah, I mean, there's still obviously heaps of development to come, but he's made an immediate impact on the club. I think better yeah. behind the ball. Yeah, definitely. Like yeah, heaps better. We've we have improved. If it's, you, I don't think you could have got much worse than we were, we were last year, let's be frank. Yeah. We've no. improved. Does that mean we're a very good side and could go very far? Time will tell. Um, but we have improved. And we've shown that so far at the start of the season. Um, now, is, <laughs> as Mert grabs his uh, massive screwdriver to open the beer. Um, the, the Which te- one? <laughs> the, te- the, the, te- the test now is, you know, we've, we've got an incredibly tough month ahead of us. Um Obviously, we've got you guys, we've got Collingwood and Geelong. So, we've got three of the top four from last year in in three weeks. Mm. Uh, and then we've got... Do we have a... Then we have... We Port. We have Port and then, and then we have Brisbane. Whoa! At Our the Gabba, though, you've got a weird yeah. record there. Yeah. But yeah, but that, that's because we played them with COVID. Yeah. The whole team had COVID last year. I thought it was year. three in the last four there. Yeah. We've, we have an okay history there. Mm. Um, but yeah, we're fucking mint. Yeah, look, we've we've good there. we've got a look. We've got a seriously tough five weeks. Yeah, um, and this is where we're going to see if things are standing up. Like we all, like I don't have huge high expectations this year. Even though we've had a great start, I still don't think we're going to play finals football. Mm. Um, I need to see a lot more. But you know, if we can get through this next five weeks and win two of three. Win three of them, you two, know. Two of three would be seriously exceeding expectations. Yeah. I think even coming away with one would be a really good position to be in, mm. as far as where we are as a club. Yeah, um, isn't that exciting though? Like you've started three and one. You've you've put the teams away that you you should have put away. You you would neck I've, and neck, or you yeah, level with St well, Kilda in that last it. quarter. Yeah, and yeah, I, yeah, I, we're in it. Yeah. I listened to your podcast about you, it took so much energy to to get back to level pegging. Mm. I actually agree with you. I think like the mental toll that it takes on a team, they're going a little bit harder physically as well. So you start to fatigue. Fair play to St Kilda, they kick away. But like, isn't that a like a nice position to be in knowing that most of these games, if not all of them are free hits and yeah. you actually get a proper sense of exactly where you're at. Like that's not a bad thing when you you're in another I wouldn't call it a rebuild because it's not, but another reset as a club. Yeah, exactly. And there's been some changes with certain players in the list um playing in positions that you know, we on this podcast were crying out for many many years ago, but they just weren't playing there and then suddenly Brad's come in and it's like, "Oh, Andy McGrath's gone back to half back." Um, you Good know, call. we're actually playing our midfielders in the midfield all the time, you know, stuff like that. Um, you know, there's a, a fair bit of debate for us about Kyle Langford and the role he's playing, which we can, you know, uh, talk about a bit later. But there's sort of confidence going, all right, you know, we feel like we're putting the pieces in the right spots at the moment. It's just about betting in the system, getting guys used used to each other and used to what they're doing. Um, there's still plenty of holes, particularly up forward, that we not, need to sort out. And look, it doesn't help when, you, you, you know, best and fairest is out for the year. 
And then the guy who's the small forward who came third in the best and fairest is also out for the next mm. six or eight weeks. And suddenly you're like, oh, that's... And you know, Schrifter sucks. So six, thanks for that one. <laughs> <laughs> Are we going to go there? I feel, I feel sorry for Sam because he's a lovely person and you get to know about... Uh, some of these footballers more than ever before from just, I don't know, a content perspective and the things that the clubs wheel out now. I have always had this gripe with Sam that I constantly talk to my father-in-law about, who's a massive Essendon supporter, listens to the show, loves your work. And um, G'day, Dave. Dave, uh, <laughs> Dave said to me, he goes, what's the go with this Wiedemann bloke? And I was like, well, the thing about Sam... Dave, you need to realise is he gets to the right positions, he just somehow finds a way to drop them, mm. and yeah, consistently drops them. It's frustrating. It's incredibly frustrating to watch because mm. you look at his leading patterns sometimes, and they're encouraging. You're like he's getting he's getting in the right spot, mm. but unfortunately for him, he's just never been able to tidy up that part of his game. I have absolutely no idea why he's been in the system for a long, long time. Mm. Just doesn't have that mungle bastard. Like yeah. some players have got that mungle bastard. They hit hard. They clunk. You've either yeah. potentially got it or you don't. Because if this guy's been in the system for seven, eight years and he can't find that part in his game, yeah. like just, how much longer yeah. do you persist? I mean, just on that, I'm, I'm not sure you necessarily need the mongrel because we've seen Peter Wright in the year he had last year. And I don't think really he has too much mongrel at all. Like bastard. even... No. <laughs> ben Brown doesn't have mongrel and he does it, you know. Yeah, but he, I mean... Even when Peter's playing amazing footy and he has had patches where he's just been clearly the best player on the ground, he doesn't tend to be that bloke who's like who seems like a really kind of you know dominant pack crushing kind of forward. Um, like I've seen from what I've seen from Wiedemann, you know, in the in the few games he's played this year. You're right in that he's he's getting his hands to the ball, and for some reason, I mean, he was stiff on the weekend, as was Harry yeah. Jones, because yeah. the umpires decided they weren't paying any fucking marks. Yeah, he also got knocked out, which didn't help. He yeah. was he was really good round one against Hawthorne. Yes, I thought he was Hawthorne. really good in against Hawthorne. But... Yes, yes, is against Hawthorne. The thing actually impressed me the most in that game was his follow up work. He got guys holding the ball. He was actually getting getting it out, which is not what I've come to expect from mm. key forwards from Essendon. But but you, we've seen him right, for though. another two and a half games. And yeah, that's enough. And it's for just me. the ball bouncing out of his hands while you know Cal Wilkie or someone. That follow up work though is rare. So what you'll get with Sam is you'll get one really promising game in every five or six where not only is he clunking and he's kicking goals, but his ground ball and his follow-up works really, really impressive. Mm. Yeah. He, he's so like, he's not even erratic. Like I'm talking literally that ratio one in every five or six, Yeah, mm. you get the full package and then he just vanishes into thin air. It's mm. really, it must be really annoying for him. Like imagine how hard this bloke's working at training, trying to like improve that consistency in his game and he just can't find it. So yeah. for me as a, for me as a Melbourne supporter, like I want the best for him. I actually I truly feel sorry for him that he just cannot find consistency. Well, it seems bizarre for a bloke that size though, who's clearly going to be able to get his hands to the ball before most others, especially yeah. as a leading forward when you are kind of dictating where the ball's going because you're leading to it. It seems bizarre that his hands just don't seem to be there, especially when he's got to the point where he's at AFL standard and has been at some, you know, for some time. It's there's something about, you know, obviously we see players with different skill levels, especially the ground balls. Like Lockie Neal, his ground ball work, Clayton Oliver, Darcy Parrish, unbelievable. Hands below their knees, incredible. But you know, for a key forward to not be able to actually take the ball cleanly in the air just seems it, it seems bizarre to me yeah. keep persisting with him yeah well this, the, the thing the, the thing for me is i like when we first picked him up i went through the numbers and the most games he played for you guys and he was 13 yeah so he's and he towed us it, a couple of times yeah and this is the thing he's had this opportunity <laughs> where he's come in Adam he's come in to be the second fiddle suddenly peter's gone a week before the season now he's number 1 he plays one good game, mm. then he hurts his toe, can't play week two, comes back in and has a terrible game, then he gets concussed in game four. So he still even had, had an opportunity to have four games in a row. So mm. w- all I want to see from him this year is have five games uninterrupted, whether it's against awesome sides or not awesome sides, five games uninterrupted and actually go... because. He has no like. There's no one keeping him out of the team. No, nah. you know he had. He is on the team sheet right now for Essendon right now. Like Harry Jones has got issues. We've got young guy Voss who may come in sometime soon. But 
he's starting every single week for the rest of the year. It might click for him one day in the same way that Eric yeah. Hipwood is... I think someone said a it to me last spud. last week. <laughs> spud, spud, but someone that I look at and I go, he's... I think the stat was something ridiculous. Like, he's the worst rated forward who's played 100 games in his career since they did champion data, right? <laughs> Which is crazy. Gee, what a claim to fame. Yeah. Uh, However... <laughs> I actually That's think it sounds career, it sounds yeah. absurd, but I actually think you look at like the makeup of his game sometimes, and I've I've watched him and he's been unplayable on his day. But again, it's that whole consistency thing. The guy can just vanish into mm. thin air in the same way that Wiedemann does. But I still up, yeah. I still feel like the penny might drop with him one day. Where he, I'm not going to say he's not going to be a star, but I'm saying he might end up becoming an incredibly serviceable serviceable mm. player for Brisbane mm. to the well, point got, where Brisbane a, might win a flag with he's him. He's got a six-year contract, so He'd you'd want hope to get it's good. <laughs> yeah. But you know what I mean? Like, it's yeah. weird like, with it, big guys. But, it, like, it happened with Peter Wright. Like, no one was expecting him to go to the no. heights that he's gone to. Like, I always thought he was going to be handy, but... <laughs> okay, Mert, Mert was, apparently. Mm. But, like, you know, he was... Basically, you know, he was knocking on the door of an all-Australian position if he kicked two or three more goals for the year, basically. Yeah. Like, he was in the top five for the Coleman in one of the worst teams in the league. Like, yeah. it's hard to kick that many goals in a team that sucks. Yeah. You know? And can't so, kick to their forwards. Yeah. <laughs> 80, how... Um, I've got an interesting stat for you. Oh, no. I don't know the exact numbers, but I just saw it somewhere today, and it's completely unverified. So, okay. I've, I've probably made it up in my subconscious. Straight but, on Twitter, probably, yeah. Um, apparently, Essendon... It was just basically a stat for every team on what they're best at. And our best stat is that we have the biggest differential in contested um, contested possessions. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, typically I would have said that the way the reason Melbourne might beat us or we might beat Melbourne would be um, your midfield. Star-studded midfield, a lot of grunt about it. The way I've seen our midfield this year is that we haven't run many players through it, but it has been extremely effective. And especially when we're on, mm. um, Darcy Parrish, his ability to get the ball out, Dylan Shiel is so far having, he's had an incredible, you know, coming up to a year since mm. the Luke Parker incident. Yeah. Um, you know, Merritt's been continually doing what Gun. he always just, does. Just doing what he does, yeah. Setterfield has been, been an good. incredible addition for us. Mm. So, Can I I've... just quickly say on that before you keep going, and I'm sorry yeah. to cut you off, but on Will Setterfield, and I'm, I'm going to indulge here because Carlton are pricks, mm. and I'm really starting to understand <laughs> why people hate them. Something we can all agree yeah. on, yeah. Just the way they're all chirping at the moment, it's early in the season. Like, sit Go down. Crows. Go, Go Crows tonight. Go Crom. Um, just quickly on Setterfield, they're all sitting there going, look at S and then this bloke's seventh string midfielder wouldn't get in all this shit, right? Mm. Will Setterfield is the prime example of fixing a gap in your game and your system. Correct. Yeah, exactly right. In the same way that last year, Fremantle did with Will Brody yeah. from the Suns. Yeah. Like he was a revelation that no one saw coming. So for Carlton, Carlton fans to come out and say that shit, like fucking sit down. Anyway, I just wanted to put that one out there. Yeah, I mean... I. Uh... I don't think it's an issue for them because they do have a lot of the same player. So he's just never going to, you know, he's never going to get a game. But with that, with our midfield now performing how it is, yep. why do you think, and I'm presuming you think you'll win because you're a day supporter, why do you think or where will you win the game if it's not necessarily in the midfield? Which is what I'm asserting. It might not be correct, but... You look at the two teams, you're absolutely banking... Banking on the fact that it rains. Yeah. And it probably will. Yeah. You've picked a very tall team. Picked a yeah. very, In very... what could be a bog. Correct. Picked a very tall team versus what is a very short team. If you look at your forward line setup, it's absolutely tiny. It's Jones, uh, one expecting to be Langford and then the, then the rest of Ruffman. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So... I think it's fascinating, Mert, that you've got Melbourne that is thinking, oh, we might be able to... Well, we definitely know that we can beat Essendon from an aerial perspective. However, I don't, think the, tall, I don't think the conditions are going to favour that. So I'm a little bit perplexed. I'm not worried, but I am perplexed at the fact that Melbourne haven't gone shorter. I think where we win the game, in, in all honesty, it's the way that we mop up the ground ball defensively. I've said this on the debrief before when we're doing our main show. The best teams in the competition for me 
are the teams that set up beautifully behind the ball and they sweep the ball out of their defensive 50. That's always been as, as Rob tries to open his beer. Get the screwdriver, mate. I'm not a screwdriver, man. You can tell I'm not a trader. Bloody hell, get the screwdriver out. You've been working on your house. What are you talking about? Yeah. Um, so for me, coming back to that point, Thank you, I think you guys, you can pump it in there, get it forward at all costs if that's the type of day it's going to be. I still have so much confidence in Melbourne's ability to absorb pressure when the ball comes in. Mm. I'm loving the way that guys like Lockie Hunter, Ed Langdon, Angus Brayshaw, Chris Judd McVie, uh, Jake Bowie, Lil Bow Wow, the way that they like sweep behind the ball, the way that we're working it out through hands and we're exiting mm. defensive 50, that's almost been one of my biggest takeaways from our first month. I reckon... For all the pressure that you guys can apply to us, because I think Essendon, when they're going well, it's it's like you know, it's like bees to a honey pot. Try and like create turnover inside your forward half, like a la Richmond of 17, 19, 20. Mm. You guys have a similar blueprint. I think Melbourne will just be a little bit too clinical at the way that they exit, and we've been one of the best defensive um, fifty transition sides this year. We've been scoring at will, so I think that's where we might. Yeah, um, be able to beat you, and and the midfield's big, and it'll, like the midfield could go other way. Like yeah. we were talking about it before, we gave your midfield a lot of credit. Like mm. Sam Draper's such a party. I love watching him play, and he's a very good ruckman. Darcy Paris is a jet. Merritt's been a jet for many years now. Uh, Jai Caldwell, who I said to Rob when you picked him up, I thought he'd be a beauty. Like you guys match up well against us. Yes, we've got Petrarca and Oliver, the best midfield duo in the comp. We've got Brody Grundy that's fit like a glove at the moment. We've got Jack Viney, who's a bull. I still think you guys have proven in the last few years you can match us in the midfield and you have beaten mm. us in the midfield at times. I just think Melbourne's class behind the ball and the way that they work it out will get you. Mm. That's where so I think we win it. I'd, I reckon that if the conditions are as bad as we think they are, I think that's going to work in our favour. because. Definitely. We expect laid outs for both teams. That's what I'm calling now. I reckon both teams, day of. Like, we've named, for us, we've named Ben Hobbs, Nick Hind, Massimo D'Ambrosio, who are all small guys, whether it be mid-forward I'd be back. very surprised if Massimo gets a run. Yeah. I'm expecting Ben Hobbs to come in as a late one. And then looking yep. at you guys, like Melksham, James Jordan, like, if it's, if it's, bucket, if it's a torrential rain... You're really going to run with T Mac and Ben Brown? Surely not. I don't think we should, and we were we were annoyed that we've brought Ben Brown back into the mix. We don't think that's right. We think the two forwards set up with T Mac and Jacob Van Royen makes absolute sense in the wet. You put Harrison Petty down back, and that's pretty much it for us. Yes, I think Adam Tomlinson's coming in for for Jake Lever. Michael Hibbard's been managed as well. Love Hibbo. Thank you for Hibbo, by the way. He's been such a good pickup for us. Love the pig. Absolute champ. Love the pig. Uh, and he, he still loves the Dons as well, the pig. Uh, and he's very well, well respected down there. But um, I think for us, if we get our clearance game going, because we haven't been good from clearance. We were pretty poor last year and it hurt us a lot. If we can start to win clearance and dominate in that area, that spells such danger because Melbourne... Yep. When they get their um, handball game going from clearance, the definitely the forward handball style. Like we can score at will. I, there was this crazy stat in the round one game against we, uh, Western Bulldogs where we took the game away from them with seventeen possessions. Mm. Mm. With seventeen possessions, we kicked five goals. Yeah, in yeah, purple I'm, patch, crazy. Yeah. Just on that, I reckon it's going to be yeah. Again, if the conditions are as bad as we think they are. I think it's going to take a little bit of that run out of it. So I think that the midfield battle is actually going to be just so much more important because yeah. it really is going to become a clearance game and a get the ball forward game. Yeah. And the old ball bounces and then doesn't move as it hits the water. <laughs> and I, I, I also think that that um, away from the midfield, I think it benefits us purely because our skills suck. We can't kick for shit and we can't hit a target inside forward 50. Yeah. So that it null as much as it one it nullifies you know the Stephen May factor and obviously Lever being out also helps that, mm. but two it nullifies our turnover factor which costs us the game against St Kilda. Best yeah. game that Lever could ever miss if it's wet. Yeah, because yeah. Lever, man. I love Lever. He's one of my favourite players at Melbourne. My but man. but honestly, yeah, your man like Jake Lever becomes less 
valuable in these conditions because yep. he's the, one of the best aerialists in the comp. Yeah, big time. Yeah, so it's, it's fucking next to useless on the ground. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's not a it's it's not a huge out given the conditions. Yeah. It sounds ridiculous, and I, it sounds like I'm disrespecting him. I'm not, mm. but if those are the conditions, it's not going to favour him. Just one more thing as well on a point you said before, and you spoke about kind of that forward pressure um, type game plan. What I'm concerned about a little bit, and increasingly so with ADJ out, and mm. to be honest, like I, I thought he needed a rest after watching him last week. I he think, heard, and he hurt his shoulder a bit. Yeah, as well, so. like he's you know he's a young player, first year player. I think we need to manage him. So it's Al- a role. Alan David Junior for any Melbourne supporters. Yeah. No man, we love Davies. Yeah. It's, it's <laughs> they might they might not know we're running with ADJ as the brothers yeah. in arms. Yeah, it's the right. It was the right call Has for Aaron me. Got kids. Uh, yep. Yep. Are those good? Probably. <laughs> Yeah. Aaron was a freak. Yeah. Alwyn was Al, Alwyn Senior was a very good player, but Aaron was. I think Aaron was. I think Al, Alwyn Junior is much more like Aaron than he is Alwyn. Well, if he's senior. like if he's like Aaron, you got a serious serious player. Yeah. So Sorry, my my concern <laughs> is just looking at our side now, and now in that forward line, we've got Jai Menzi, who absolutely does apply pressure, and he's done it very well. Harry Jones, who does for a big man, but he's never going to be a game breaker in that respect. We've listed Darcy Parish there; he won't play there. Archie, who does very little, really, in that respect. Paco, who can do whatever he wants because he's the best player in the game. (laughs) Um, Nick Martin, who won't play there either. So, you know, and then we've got Will Snelling, who's probably realistically, he's the only one who's going to be playing that kind of small forward defensive pressure, you know, frontal pressure kind of game in that forward 50. So And and, and Colwell's the other one who'll probably... So he, well. he he will do it, yeah. but we don't have that, you know, I feel like we really miss out without having a Guelphie in there, yeah. which I can't quite believe I'm saying, but, mm. you know, had a great season last year. He's quick. He's so aggressive for the hottest player in the AFL. And, <laughs> um, you know, you chuck him in, or remove him from that side and then, you know, remove ADJ. And then all of a sudden we look, we look a lot slower, Hang basically. On. So, yeah. I don't, I'm not sure that that's actually really going to be a factor at all. In fact, the last couple of weeks, I've felt like the opposition has waltzed it out a little too easily. Yeah. The What's only it? thing I gleaned from that is Guelphie's hotter than Clayton Oliver. Obviously. Yeah, uh, a, a touch, I think. <laughs> it's, it's a, yeah, it's a tough one. Um, yeah, like before, you know, we looked at the weather and all the different, and the teams had come out and all that different stuff. The first thing I thought about with playing Melbourne is that the, the issue for us is that if we kick the ball like we did against St Kilda, May and Lever and Petty are just going to mop the ball mm. up. And if we come out of this game and, you know, May, Petty and Tomlinson, for instance, if those guys have 10 to cent marks between them, like that's game over. They almost can't in We've those lost. conditions. Well, that's the thing. This this is why it's net, the game has changed a little bit if the weather is as bad as we think it's going to be. So I've gone from being like, you know, there are other parts of the game that we look okay, but I'm worried about the fact that we're just going to kick it to your guys and it's going to come back at the other end. What if... It doesn't, right? <laughs> oh, you mean the bureau lie to us? <laughs> yeah. What what would it, like what would you honestly think just before the game if you're like far out? It hasn't like the heavens it's haven't simply descended. simply getting carried out before before the first quarter's finished. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, I'll be That's stoked because Mert and I are going to be standing there on the hill, so we'll be yeah. wrapped that we're not you know drenched underwater. Yeah. Honestly, um, that that crow, would crow, change qu- quickly. Crows four goals to one. Go Crom. Oh yes. Fuck yeah. yeah. Fucking yeah. 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 Go Crom. Um, yeah. Derek so, loves that. Yeah. <laughs> yes, Derek. Oh, it's on. Oh, he's got the footy on. Too. Oh, he's, How's this? <laughs> oh, check it back on. Oh, we've got it on the screen. This is gee, we're, we're moving up in the world. Um, we really? Yeah. Are. So that that was a thing for me coming this week. Now, there's something I'd I'd like to get your opinion on, eighty. Um, and you know, I'm not not sure if you've seen my 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 weekly YouTube video that I, I spoke about this yesterday. On, I haven't seen the new one. Yeah. Um, Can you ask the fans? Do they enjoy the first one? Uh, they are. Yeah, they've gained yeah, plenty they... of comments. I fucking hate it. <laughs> <laughs> you hate it? No, they hate it. Oh, the, the fans Everyone hates it. I yeah. love it. Um, oh, so, the thing I flagged is that the, this is the first time in, I can't remember how many games, that Max isn't playing against us. Yes. And Max has done very, very well against our Ruckman, whether it's Draper, he's Phillips. Great, he's, he's an incredible player, Max. Uh, Tom Bell Chambers when he was getting around, like we we come into that game and like we we this this podcast that we would do five six years ago, you'd be like, oh, sir, who who would you like on your team from Melbourne? I, we'd be like, oh, Max Gorn's good. <laughs> <laughs> that was that, you know, yeah, so good. That, What's that about? That was us six years ago. Yeah, because we were, 
How old are we now? We're, we're mid twenties. <laughs> we're little skinners back then. Don't worry. I got a kid now. <laughs> I got a kid now. But my yeah, my point being is that we've always come into this game <laughs> thinking f- about Max. Thinking about Max. Yeah. Um, that's not there anymore. No. It's very different. And yeah. that's okay. Brody's Brody's now playing for you, and Brody's great, and he has a lot of assets. Mm. I'll ask you a question. Do you remember? And I, I don't expect you to. Do you remember Essendon versus Collingwood in 2020 in the COVID season? Do you remember watching that game? No, Did you see I, that game? I, I don't. Okay, so, I do. Ask so, me. Ask me. What happened in that game, Mert? Quickly, in a sentence. Uh, Andrew Phillips happened. Yes. So. We brought Andrew Phillips into this game, and this oh, was yes. this is this is when Drape, Draper was very young. Well, Tom Beltramers, uh, Beltramers was still in the team, yeah. so Andrew Phillips came in, and I'm not sure if there's such a thing as a ruck tag. I don't know if that exists, but if that does exist, this is what that was. Andrew yeah. Phillips came in, mm-hmm. and Andrew Phillips' biggest asset is he's just he's an absolute monster. He's incredibly fit, and he gets around the ground and he just competes. Physical, yeah, incredibly physical, mm. and Follow he work is so good. he. Bullied Brody Grundy. He took him to the absolute cleaners. He was all over him everywhere. And like Grundy's the extra mid. He's always there in the chain, but they'd go to him. Yeah, at and this what stage as well, Grundy was and this is, close to the best. This is peak Grundy. Behind, this is, behind obviously Max. Yeah, yeah, but, but like this is when the media were having the conversation, being like, oh, is this This guy is better? when he earned his contract. Yeah, this is this is the contract here. <laughs> and Andrew Phillips came in I remember. and he wrecked him. Yeah, he did. So I've actually come See, into this game I'd, going, I'd, we could actually get on top in this area that we've never been on top of you in but for I'd, seven I'd, years. I actually really like it more so for Draper mm. because I think Draper, yeah. you know, Draper, he's, he's been playing well this year. He's more so, you know, he has games where his, where his tap work is really quite good. He has other games where when it's absolutely awful and he doesn't make the contest, but he always seems to influence a game by the end of the game, even if it's for, you know, just a quarter in the third or something like that, Mm. in either his follow-up work or his tap work. Yeah. And so what I'd love to see is him take the next step and, you know, perhaps knowing that he's got Phillips there to support him as well and probably play a bit more forward, Mm. that he actually gets... He's the one who takes the reins. He's the one who... We know he's aggressive. He's aggressive towards Grundy, and he really acts as that dominant ruckman and tries to enforce himself on the game a mm. bit more because yeah. he's done it in the past. But when you've got a Grundy, mm. like one and a very good ruckman in his own right, but mm. you've got one Grundy against two of our big blokes, mm. then I'd really hope he takes takes that opportunity. I agree. Mm. We spoke about that before. We said it's a big task for Brody. He's had an awesome couple of weeks, but he had to come up against a Peter Laddams and not a Tom Hickey against mm. Sydney. He did a great job. He absolutely murdered him. Um, he was at second mid. Adelaide kicked another. They're up by 29. Go Crom. It's only halfway through the first. Go Crom. Go Crom. Come on. Hate Crom. Um, then my new had it, team. Um, I, and- I go to bed at night, every single night, thinking about how much I hate Carlton. Oh, mate. I get <laughs> so it. welcome to my fucking world. I honestly, <laughs> I honestly understand it now. Um, and then the second thing is... Phillips has done a number on him. I've forgotten about that. Brody came up against Bailey Williams last week and it was a bit of a makeshift setup for um, West Coast. They mm. didn't have Nick Nadanui. Again, mm. he ran right. He had an amazing game, Brody. He's had an awesome fortnight. But we said, this is a big test. A big like he's got, he's got a very good up-and-coming star ruckman in Sam Draper. I think in maybe two, three years, he'll be one of the best rucks in the game, like potentially heir to the throne of a Max Gorn. Mm. That's how highly I rate um, Draper. He's just, nice. he's a cool dude too. Mm. Um, and then the second thing is Phillips, as Rob pointed out, like he just loves to compete. So mm. he's a huge task for Brody. And then it's going to be a massive task for probably a Tom McDonald and a Jake and Van Royen, who's only a second year player. Like they're going to come in and, and help shoot. out. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. I mean, it's definitely one area where you can get on top. Yeah, exactly. And no I doubt. think I think if what you were saying, Mert, that you know, because of the conditions, the clearance game becomes vital. This is you know, opportunity for us to have first hand on it in in the middle. Brody, though, his strength is just getting around the ground, and so the test is going to be that. Yeah, mm. if we do butcher the ball going forward, and then when Melbourne play, uh, sorry, when we butcher the ball going forward, and the Melbourne players are rebounding it. Is Draper or Phillips able to do the work? To make sure that Brody's not just being that extra mid, because if he is just freely being that link, I th- I think that's way, where he can hurt us. I think the way he could probably he, he could probably get us as well is, and I'm not sure how he's played this role this year. Um, obviously, Max has been, I think, the one who's gone forward a lot in the past. Well, he's increased that certainly in the into his game. 
Um, I'm not sure. Do you do you think like do you see him as perhaps drifting forward if we've got only the one ruckman, one off? Do you see him as trying to exploit that and go forward? He normally likes to, as you pointed out, get involved in that handball chain mm. and become just an extra player. He's, in our he's more of a anyway. Dane Cox type. Absolutely. Yeah, 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 very much so. Just loves getting around the ground. Um, likes to get a bit of a gap on his opponent, his direct ruckman. Is he good at getting stoppage? getting back in the hole? Because like that's like when I think of Gorn, like when I think of Gorn, mm. yes, tap work. I think of Max Gorn. I think Max going back into a pack. Yeah. And taking a huge intercept mark and then just Melbourne steady. Just, just, like, just think that's pack, what I think of Gorn. Think but, pack mark. Yeah, Max Gorn. No, that's not Brody's game. It never has been. He doesn't do that much and it's not his role and I don't think he's been directed to do that that's where we've probably well, got I guess that's why you got those other guys well that's why time. we've got an embarrassment of riches when it comes to tools down back so Petty but, but just Lever looking... and May do that all day and every day and Adam Tomlinson's actually in, in he's in really really rock solid form mm. I think we were harsh on him last year because he was still coming back from that ACL he looks like he's getting back to the form that he showed in 2021 before he did his knee. Mm-hmm. So we're lucky that we've got those great intercept players that can zone off. Because I think just just looking at and kind of what I was trying to get to was just looking at our defense. And, you know, we've known this for a long time, but we're short, you know. And yeah, I mean, Ridley, it seems like Ridley off the back of, you know, the games we played this year, which is obviously limited number of games, but he's back to what he used to be. He's back to what he was before last year. Um, Zerk Thatcher's playing really good footy for us and you know then he's, our, he's our anchor basically they're basically he's I mean one. R- Ridley's really only you know he's six foot four he's not he's not a proper tall Zerk Thatcher might be an inch taller than him six five yeah, yeah. Um, away from that we don't have much height and we've had Jaden Laverde who's six three at best but none of your guys are like 200 centimeter guys are they we've got Ben Brown how, how big's Roy? and then He's big boy. New kid's massive, isn't he? He's, he's a big unit. He'd be he'd be sitting at about six five. I I again, I'm not really. It's funny how you say big six five is big, and we've just been saying it's small. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not really. I'm not really. I'm, look, oh I look at this game, and I just don't think about the tools too much. So, there's a few players in our forward line, the mix that we absolutely love at the moment. So Neil Bullen and Spargo. Mm. Are winding the clock back to our premiership year. They've been awesome. AMB is a great they've, player. They've been absolutely awesome. Yeah. And then Cade Chandler, who's come in, has been an absolute revelation. He's had to, as I said before, bide his time to get into the team. He puts on so much pressure. And I think the one player who will be the the game breaker and will win this game on the Cozy? weekend is Cozzy. Yeah. Cozzy is the perfect player. Looking at player. that forward line that they've got, and I'll say it for the listeners seven um, goals, crumb. <laughs> Kay Chandler, Bailey Fritch, A&B, Alex Neil-Bullen, Charlie Spargo, Ben Brown, Cozzy Pickett. That, yep. That's the kind of balance, as, you know, as much as we've said you've gone tall and you have tall. your defense, that's the kind of balance that I am talking about with our forward line that I would like to see in terms of those smalls who are going to create pressure on the ground. Yeah, when the but, ball hits the ground. But in this, at the in the same vein as we talk about Cozzy Pickett potentially being the match winner, and he kicked two five last week and yeah. had three goal assists. Just while we're at it, the guy could have kicked five and had three goal assists. He's which, like he's like Paco, which is berserk. Yeah, he no, is. No one's like Paco. <laughs> he so Jake Stringer, and we like we didn't even bring him up in the podcast before. I mean, it was very Melbourne centric, and we had, didn't do a review show because I got food poisoning from uh, said pub. I'm not going to shame them. <laughs> Say name your dog. No, I'm not going to. We've done that before and pissed off a pub, and they had to call us and go. Can't believe you called us out. Yeah, uh, free beers. <laughs> <laughs> no, I actually saw. I did see the owner of that particular establishment once, and uh, we we had a beer and we broke the ice and spoke about it. But Jake Stringer. Mm. We sit there and we go, okay, we can match up on a Harry Jones. We can match up on, you know, if a Kyle Langford goes forward, we can match up here, there, and everywhere. But, like, Jake Stringer is so friggin' difficult. Like, Mm, mm. in the same way that Bailey Fritch is so unbelievably hard to defend, I think he's one of the slipperiest forwards in the comp. So Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's going to be really interesting. Um, Jake Stringer for us, like, I sit there and I go, far out, Michael Hibbard would have been absolutely perfect. Mm. For Jake Stringer, He's maybe big for pig. Maybe it's Trent Rivers. I reckon you send Stephen May to him personally. Well, we could because I, it, I think it's yeah. because he's prop like the thing. He's playing basically full forward. I reckon he's going to. He was. He'll be staying inside fifty. He might 
do it like one or two center bounces. But if I was Simon Goodwin, I'd just put put my own. I think Stephen... no, knowing that we don't have any any embarrassment of riches down there. In terms Correct. Of so so you go Rolls Royce forward, which which Jake Stringer is. He's an absolute jet on Rolls Royce defender. Yeah. Simple. Match. Yeah. I I do you know what? I totally agree with you, Rob. I think that's the way the Melbourne should roll with it. I'll I'll, I'll rip on one Melbourne player and I'll pump up another Melbourne player. Oh, here we go. So quickly. Um, I don't. Not that we condone betting on this show, but get a bet on Charlie Spargo to get a head high tackle and an easy goal because he oh, loves a loves he loves a dive. He's a midget. Um, second one, big pump up. Now, a guy who is new <laughs> to Melbourne, and you might not know this. Historically, Lockie Hunter tortures Essendon. Mm. He has done it countless times to the Bulldogs. Loves to play against us. Gets a lot of footy. Very good player. Also loves so, diving, that guy. Yeah, but he's, he came from the Bulldogs. It's expected. Exactly um, right. He, I, I expect him to have a very good game. Like our our wingers, they're good. Got they're good young players, but they've got they've got a long way to go. Nick Martin, incredibly talented player, very. could end up being one of Essendon's best players in a few years if he's not there already. He's, Sam, he's Sam, a Royce. Sam, yeah, he's he's a he's the Royce. Royce. Sam Durham, absolute workhorse, needs to get better with his skills, yep. but just go so hard at it. Very young guys. I think Lockie Hunter might have that little bit of extra experience in the footy smarts and could take advantage of those guys. Oh, I, I agree. Lockie Hunter has been incredible. It's been such an amazing pickup for us. He holds his width in the same way that Ed Langdon does. Melbourne have got the secret weapon. The way that we use our wingers is, I think it's one of the most, I would almost say it's one of the most critical, invaluable things to come out of footy in the last few years. Um, all right. Can you, all, can you all just raise your glasses real quick? What are we doing here? Uh, Crom 49, Carlton 7. Oh. Yay! Woo. Oh, my right. God. Touch Ray's wood. Touch fuck wood. Hope, fuck you, Sardi. Hopefully, hopefully they keep it going. Uh, that's that's wild. And hang on. There's still five minutes left in the first quarter. Oh, how Derek. Good, how good's Gather Round? How good are you? Gather Round's fantastic. Yeah, this is my favorite round ever. Oh. Ever. Um, tip, tip the crows. Continue. Gr- Sorry. I just... I think you've made a great shout, Lucky Hunter. And the point I'm making... He's a really good player. point I'm making about the way that our two wingers work, they get us out of trouble. They roll back defensively. And then they link up and get involved in some of our scoring attacks. They've got huge tanks. I didn't realise how much of a tank Lucky Hunter had. Maybe it's something he worked mm. on in the preseason. Because you have, Melbourne, you have, I mean, you have to plan the win. Well, Melbourne probably said to him, they go, hey, mate, here's a complete reset. You've been at the Bulldogs for 10 years. Your old man was there. He's a father-son. He was in the change rooms as a little Is he tucker. A father-son? Yeah. I didn't know that. So he's like, he's, he's, he's absolute Bulldogs diehard, yep. right? And he's come through the ranks. And then suddenly... For whatever reason, they want to kick him out of the club. Um, we've heard about some of his off-field issues. And then they get him into Melbourne. And Simon Goodwin would have just eyeballed him and gone, you fuck up here, you're going and playing at Casey. And no one wants to play at Casey. Trust mm. me. Yeah. It's pretty awful down there, especially when it's wet and windy. And he has just taken this opportunity with both hands. So I don't know that he would have awesome. had that kind of fitness anyway. But I understand he's what so you're good. saying. Yeah, I understand what you're saying as far as the performance is, is concerned. But... Like this is a guy who's also a multiple. I think he's multiple, isn't he? All Australian. He's got. I think he one, was two years ago. One, one All Australian. He's won one BNF, um, and he came third in the BNF in their premiership season. Mm-hmm. It's and pretty good want, going. And he won yeah. a flag. So. And he won a flag. And he won a flag. Exactly. So and great shout, Rob. Came, not not bag. For, oh, bag well, do you want me to pull a few out before we yeah. start to wind down? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can tip on one and then pump up another. I'm not going to tip on any. There's too many to tip on. So. <laughs> Um, so it's too easy. <laughs> uh, we, we, as as Marcus said before he left here, we do it enough, so he doesn't need to. <laughs> no, 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 no. And I mean, yeah, no. I'm not going to tip on too many. I've I've softened in my uh, older age now. I don't speak like a little boy anymore. Um, I've Kyle Langford. I think has been growing as a player. I think I really like his development. He's a gun. He's Definitely a, a player that uh, Dave, the father-in-law, has been happy with. Uh, Mason Redman, he's a prick and I love his toughness. So mm-hmm. I'd love yep. to have a player like him in, in, in my side as well. And then I'll give um, this boy the biggest pump up. So this is the kid that's, he's a poster boy, but I reckon he's going to be a genuine star. He's the he's the bloke that you, he'll put the, the team on his back. Um, and I think he's the one that you, you don't model your whole team around, but I think Archie Perkins is the one. And I mentioned it to you, Rob, in the in the office, like, two or three years ago when we had the debate around Nick Cox, Harrison Jones, Archie Perkins. Mm. And you asked me and I was like, mate, 
It's Perkins. Mm. It's 100% Perkins. Um, he's starting to prove his worth. Or he's, he's Perkin, according to Fox Footy these days. So. Yeah. He's... Um, what? Did, yeah, go watch, go watch <laughs> the game back from it. Sunday. Buddy, Mark Howard and... Oh, he's um, Perkin. Ha- Howard and... Um, oh, my God. The other one. Anyway, uh, Cam Mooney was like, oh, Perkin. Fucking idiots. Perkin, Perkin, Perkin. <laughs> <laughs> he's, um, he's an absolute jet. And um, I've been really impressed with his trajectory... I think he's going to some um, some high I think, places. I think he needs to take the next step, and I thought he thought he might off the back of his round one. So we'll see. Yeah. He's rooster too. He's yeah. so hot. Yeah, yeah if he's <laughs> and, 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 and interesting one for us. And look, we've spoken to death about it on our show, but I know I'm pretty sure you're running this as a simulcast on your program anyway. Who knows? Um, I've but, got marker on my podcast, so it goes to weird areas. Yeah, but which I love with Perkins. We've wanted him to play a little bit more midfield time. So we've been talking a bit on our show about centre bounces tendencies and who's been going there. Essendon has used the least amount of players of any club. We've basically we've had five through there. Five, actually, it's, it's including six, the rucks. So it's no, it's what? so excluding rucks. We've had we've had four who Parish. have had ninety nine percent. Yeah, and then Coldwell has gone in for like four or five. Paco has gone in for two. So they it's it's, so the it's same. Merritt, Shield. Merritt, Parish, Shield, Setterfield, Setterfield are the four. Mm. I can give you. I can give We've you. We've had now. Caldwell like less than a handful of times, what are you and doing? Pa- Paco in twice last week. So, I'll, I'll, and that's it. I'll get, mix I'll, it up. I'll, I know exactly. So, I'll give and we've got we've got Archie Perkins sitting in the forward line. We got a Nick Martin who can run through there. Obviously, um, Jai Caldwell is the big one that we all want to see through there. Kyle Langford, arguably, um, and then we've got a Ben Hobbs sitting in the twos at the moment. Who he'll become a we all, he'll, he'll Ben he'll, Hobbs will be an absolute jet. He's come back from injury. He'll yeah. he'll crack in the side. But we spoke it a bit after our St Kilda game, and you know we referenced Melbourne because the argument for keeping those guys is like, well, if I've got, you know, if I got a Ferrari, why would I put it, you know, anywhere else, you know? So, but the difference with you guys is that you've got your top three. Viney, Petrarca, and Oliver. But then the spread through your James Jordans and guys like that is a lot more. Where we've literally, I'll give you the numbers 80. Zach Merritt's gone to 88. Parrish has gone to 88. Setterfield, 85. Shield, 76. And then the next midfielder, Coldwell, with six. Wow. Stringer with two. So yeah. it's a lot of trust in that. I've had a few North Melbourne supporters. I know they exist. I was surprised. Hit me up. <laughs> And said, when he was at North, that's what Brad Scott did, is he goes, these are my guys, and I'm just going to back them every single week. And there's an argument for why it's good. There's obviously an argument for why it's not as good. But it was, it's an interesting thing The game's gone away year. from that, though. It has. Like, Geelong proved that last year. Hmm. Geelong were amazing at the way that they kind of shook it up in the middle. Yeah. I find that really interesting. I've got one for you as well, because I know you Essendon folk like to spruik this one, but average uh, median games... Last week in round four, yeah, I don't, I think we're quite high up there. Well, no, no, yeah, listen to this one. So no surprise, Geelong at one hundred and fifty-five. Second is Fuck. Melbourne at one hundred and thirty-two. For eight, for games, for games, average, median. Western Bulldogs are third as a huge drop off to one hundred and eight, and then it kind of meanders into the hundreds, nineties, eighties, seventies. You guys are sitting at fifteenth on sixty-five games, so. Melbourne are double, yeah, essentially double in terms of uh, average median games. However, this is mind blowing. Couldn't believe this. Average age, Geelong again, yeah, oldest, twenty eight years, one hundred and sixty days. Bulldogs are second. Collingwood, Richmond, blah 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 blah. You drop all the way down to Melbourne, who are pretty much halfway through this list at twenty five years, two hundred and twelve days. Essendon only a couple of rungs below at 25 years and 88 days. Mm. So what that says to me, which Melbourne have been, we've been really lucky with this. So we were able to do an absolute full rebuild where it's just all about continuity and playing kids from 18, 19, and you just play them forever. When you mm. got guys like Brayshaw at pick four, Petrarca at, um, sorry, Brayshaw at pick three, Petrarca at pick two, Oliver at pick four, um, we were able to play those guys from day one. And then you got guys like Cozzy who at 21, he's played 64 games. Rivers, who's 21, he's played 56 games. Petty, 23, he's played over 50 games. Spargo's only 23, but he's played 87 games. Mm. So the difference there is like people like to talk about, you know, Melbourne are in the sweet spot, which I said to you today, Rob, and they are. They're, they're definitely in their premiership window and hopefully we're there for the next few years. But 
We've also done a really, really good job to promote youth, mm. keep that list young mm. and keep ourselves there for as long as we can. Still noting that we've got the second highest average games, mm. but we're sitting mid-tier now in terms of age, age and experience. So I'm really happy about that. I thought we'd come out looking a lot older than what we were. Mm. Mm. But the comforting thing for Essendon fans is just the sheer fact that you've got so many years ahead of you to develop and mm. grow and this is you've got to exercise a bit of patience and I know you yeah. guys don't want to be patient anymore but it, it bodes well for both sides yeah if the way that I, you look I think, at that yeah it depends which way you look at it because the way I look at it is that it's quite damning in terms of our development of players I think because oh, it's gone the negative lens that's not that yeah well if you look at the like you talk about the age difference there and there's really not that much whereas there's a massive gap in the games which is what you know that's what I've taken out of that we've turned over a lot of players in the last few years a lot of players have either left the club or have been delisted that sort of thing as well and then we've obviously brought it we've got a few guys who are older but actually just haven't played a great deal of footy like Phillips for example is one of our you know older players but he's only played let me have a look 65 games, you know what I mean? He's 31, but he's played 65 games because he's been a number two ruck his whole career. So there's a few guys like that that kind of skew the data. I think the other thing for us is that, you know, of our last of our last four first-round picks, or no, five first-round picks, there's only one in the team right now. They're all injured, you know what mm. I mean? So it's like, I'd, we'd, in, I'd, I'd love to... Injuries have killed us. Yeah, like, I'd love to be in a position where we've got a guy who's 22 who's played 50-plus games already, but... The only guys that that sort of happened to was like Andrew McGrath has had, had a very good run. Zach Merritt has played. Merritt he's plays almost played 200 game. games and he's only 27 still. Like those sort of guys where we've just got so many guys who've just come in, have come out, have come in, have come out and just haven't had a lot of continuity. And I think that does skew the games towards us. But yes, we do, you know, we do still have a very you know, inexperienced core of guys there. So. You definitely do. I I I think you're on the right path. I often have these conversations with Dave, who's getting the third or fourth mention tonight. He'll absolutely love that. He'll be basking in that tomorrow <laughs> Shout out when, Dave. He, when he texts me. I'll invite us down to Lawn, Dave. Yeah, oh, mate, love, love to get you there. We had a nice trip there once. Um, but in all honesty, like, yes, people will know this and people that have listened to this show for a very, very long time. Like, I do have a particular hatred of Essendon. It comes from my childhood. So, um, and just being around people like Mert. Um, so I do, I do think you're on the right path. I do think it will eventually happen. I've always got this theory as well. Like you can't keep a big dog down for too long. You actually can't. Like I think it's been down for a long time. I know it's been down for a long time, but I know Carlton are getting a bit of a flogging at the moment and long may it continue. Hopefully it doesn't blow up in our face and 51 to 13 quarter. Yeah. Well, that's a, that's a good score, Rob. We like that. But I think Carlton have come through. Yes, it's taken a lot of time, but they'll be back up again. Unfortunately, they're going to be contending for flags in the next four or five years. I can't see why they can't with that list at the moment, the way that it's grown. Richmond, they were down for a long time. I think the way that the AFL has manufactured it and engineered the system that we see, and let's not forget, you guys are coming out of one of the most... Awful, controversial sagas of all time that it could rock any club, could almost send some clubs into administration. They never come back from it. Um, honestly, oh, it would, absolutely would have. There are some clubs who would have folded. Could it could have sunk a, lot, a few? Could have clubs. Could have yeah. sunk a few clubs. So Carlton would have folded. So, <laughs> I actually would have. We wish they did. So that that so that's been lingering. That's been lingering, right? So I just I think the way it's all set up, I think you'll have your time in the sun. You've had a lot of false dawns with a few coaches, but I don't know. For me personally, trying to be objective, I do think this reset with Brad Scott might actually be the one. Yeah. And all you have to do, and I've said this to you for a long time, Rob, all you have to do is just get the monkey off the back with that first finals win. Definitely. That first finals win could be the cure oh, and I'm the catalyst for everything. Days after that. Oh, of course. I've, but really, the, I've, 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 I've booked that I, in. I genuinely yeah, believe advanced. like it's I'm, just... I've quit my job. <laughs> It's it's that one little pressure release valve that's become a giant bolt mm. and nut it's in the fabric of the club. Once you get rid of that, yeah, 
Mm. I reckon you'll see a very different football club. Yeah, and that's the thing. We we had to spill a lot of blood end of last year to do the right things, and you know the media had a field day as they always do when any club has a has a spill. But there was always a part of me that was like, I feel like the, like the right things are happening. You know the the people who talk media language are getting out, and the people who speak football language are getting in, and you know. Again, for the Melbourne supporters who are listening, go back and watch a Ben Rutten press conference and then listen to the way Brad Scott talks. And like the thing, the thing is funny about Brad is because he's come from this AFL role, half his press conferences are them asking him stuff about the wider AFL because he's such an authority. And I'm yeah. like, yeah, John Worsall was was an authority at Essendon, but it was a bit different. Like he actually came to Essendon because he wasn't that highly rated anymore. He was kind of a little bit washed up. Whereas Brad Scott is still pretty, you know, he was. Whereas Brad Scott is very, very, you know, widely rated across the football landscape. And look, it's just very refreshing for us. So, yeah, it's good. Um, yeah I love it. And yeah, you guys are probably going to win the flag this year. Um, let's, uh, let's, we like to wrap up with some predictions on our show. We get pretty wild with bog? them. So, do you do a bog? Yeah. So, it's, we, we go, so we, we go, be- Obviously, yeah, it's, be- it's best on ground. <laughs> it's best on ground, most goals. And then, like, you know, the story of the game, like a little headliner, some little mm, thing that's going to happen. Um, and, yeah, it can be serious. It can be an absolute piss take. Uh, it doesn't mean anything, but it's up to you. So, um, I'll throw it to Mert first. Just put him on the spot. What do you got for me, Mert? Well, it's not going to be that interesting, to be honest. Okay. Pretty it never is. No, it never is. <laughs> never is. Um, yeah, I think following on from last week, it's just going to be Paco kicking another... You know, Five, hopefully more behinds and goals yep. again. Yep. Four, six? Yeah, I reckon. Five, we'll... 11, I reckon. Yeah. yeah. Five, seven. Yeah, five, five, seven. seven. <laughs> um, dominant display again. Um, somehow, not going to get best on ground. It's going to go to Draper, yeah. I reckon. Ooh, big drapes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Are you winning? No, fuck no. No, no. <laughs> So we 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 predict win, we, we predict our own players, but we don't actually say yeah. if we win or not, lose. Not here to win. So you got a couple of bogs, um, but you don't win. Yeah, Be- Ran- best on for our team. Oh yeah, yeah. sorry. Yeah. So, random, so you do the same for you. Random oh. prediction is, uh, yeah, in an ambulance by halftime. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> Being you. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Um, do I go? Yeah. You do can I go. take the floor? You okay. Um, so I'm. So, are you predicting Melbourne by how much? Just quickly, Matt. How much? I'll, I'll give you a goal, mate. Give us a goal. Oh, yeah, okay. One goal. A tight yeah. one. Yeah. Um, It'll be one goal scored for the whole game in the wet. That'll be it. <laughs> Interesting. Six yeah, points. To, six yet, points to five behinds. That's yet, the game. Yeah, Paco somehow <laughs> kicks five goals. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I'm going to go an absolute <laughs> Melbourne, Essendon, classic, just a turgid, horrid, awful game. Worst game of the round, which it tends to be. Yeah. Turgid. Historically, like yeah, turgid is a good word, and uh, we'll go something ridiculous like I don't know, five seventeen to <laughs> five seventeen to like seven twenty. <laughs> Melbourne Jesus. and Melbourne just get it done by a couple or three goals. I honestly think we'll only get it done by that much. Mm. I really do. I think it'll be just so dour, and uh, I do think Paco will get off the chain and he'll kick all of your five. Mm. <laughs> The only goals kick for us. <laughs> He'll kick all of your five. <laughs> Cozzy will kick all of our seven. Yeah. Um, and I think the headline of the day will be uh, Bert and Rob getting on TV. Yeah. On the hill. Just sliding down the hill in the mud. Yeah, yeah. I think like end up you end up getting to the third quarter. The footy's that shit that you just end up forming a, a slide. Yeah. <laughs> with ponchos or whatever. You just get... I don't know. You get creative in the stands. See, see how far you can throw me down the hill. Yeah, yeah. and you just slide yeah. down. That'll be the highlight. Like and do you know what? I reckon it'll get to the point where on AFL 360 on Sunday night, you'll get a run. Yeah. And they'll go, what's the funniest thing you saw? What's the funniest thing you saw? Yeah. And it'll be you, Blake, sliding be re- down yeah. the hill. It'll be real or overreaction, and it'll be real. It'll, it'll be, be ab- very it'll real. Be absolutely real. The slide on the hill, We that'll be the story. That'll be you, Absolutely boys. real. Feel on the hill. Uh, I'm going to go... Uh, for Essendon, I'm going to say most goals to Kyle Langford. I think he'll play forward. I reckon that Will Setterfield's going to be our best player. I think he's going to have a really, really big game for us. And my story is that um, Adelaide Oval is going to float away. 
at some point it's just going <laughs> to float off into the sea. <laughs> I didn't do my bog. Uh, Clary, it always is. He's the GOAT. Uh, 42 goals, 10 tackles, 12 score involvements, uh, three Brownlow votes votes which Green is pretty Brown. typical of Clayton Oliver mm. very typical you'd love to have him of course you would why wouldn't you yeah you'd love to have him yeah I would he's the yeah. best, he's I mean, the best he, midfielder in the comp why wouldn't you want to have he him he can't kick the ball but no he can he actually can yeah. it's a myth he can he just doesn't do it very well no he, yeah. no, he does <laughs> he, just cho- he chooses not to you need to watch, you need to watch the games more he chooses we've been too amicable <laughs> <laughs> Let's start turning off. Yeah, let's re-record. Let's yeah, go. Let's re-record. All right. Imagine if the gloves were off and we didn't x rated All right. Yeah. Following X. Ex- <laughs> you want to, want to hear what I really yeah. want to say about Paco? Yeah. yeah right. the following Melbourne players are frauds. Here we go. Um, no. Which uh, ones? <laughs> oh, Jack Lever. <laughs> my man. Yeah, my, my man, JL. The day the day turned the corner and came good. I was like, damn. I so know. Many- the day that Parrish came good, we had this thing because Parrish was kind of struggling a little bit, but he's always been pretty good. And then, um, yeah, Jake Lever turned the corner. I think so. I, mean, cool. I think they both were all Australian the same what team, just doing? about. I just about. Um, anyway, Adrian, thank you very much for joining us. It's been good. Um, Let's go watch the Blues, hopefully. Lose. Yeah. Thank you, listeners, whether you be Essendon or Melbourne, who've tuned in. Um, shout out to my brother-in-law and my sister, who are about to have another kid on Oi! Monday. Very exciting. So another little D supporter. Mike doesn't listen to Mike doesn't listen to the sash, but he does listen to the debris. Listen to this and one, so Mike. Does, so does Pete, who's about to be have another another grandchild. So that, that's very yeah. exciting for them. Yeah. Um, if you're an Essendon or a Melbourne supporter and you're on the hill, come say hi to Mert and I. We'll have the planes beanies yeah. on and we'll be drenched in our poncho. So come say hi. If yep. you've got an umbrella, bring it over. We'll we'll love to use it. Yep. Um, or a gazebo or anything that keeps us dry. Um, Can you put a poll up? Like, just I'm interested in data and. Uh, Analytics. <laughs> <laughs> All right, nerd. Can you, can you put a poll up and say like... You going, question mark? Bring, bring me back next year or or ditch me. Oh, for you. Sorry, yeah. I thought you meant like you going to... Nah, are just you going to Adelaide a guest Oval? on the show. Like, do people enjoy this? Are they like, can you fuck that demon's bloke off? He's shit house. I don't know. I think it's all right. No, oh, I think it's actually been quite an insight. I've enjoyed the hell out of it, but it's been I'm just quite a... analytical, which is unusual yeah. for us. I don't know. I thought yeah. I thought we're getting older in age. We're yelling less and we're you know asking more questions. Well, I've got a less, child. Less so. dog of the week, which having, sucks. Yeah. Having a child's changed me for the better. Yeah. Well, if, if you don't listen next week, though, listeners, there will be a return of the dog of the week. Yeah. Dog of the Week's hard because it's the same person every week, so you can't change it. The Caroline Wilson Dog of the Week <laughs> award <laughs> yeah. goes to Caroline Wilson. Wilson. Yeah. Yeah, if Occasionally, we... Sam Mitchell wins it, but then it flips quickly back to Caro. So oh, Caro. It's, will... it's too easy with Sam Mitchell these days. Yeah, it is. He's yeah. doing all the good work for us, taking down that disgusting club. Yeah. Uh, that And that's one thing that I wholeheartedly agree on. Yeah. yeah. Can't stand them. It's great to see them down the bottom. Yeah. Thank you, Sam. It is. Uh, thanks, listeners. Uh, appreciate your support as always. Thank you, Derek, for hosting us here on a Thursday afternoon. Love you, Derek. Thank Thursday. you to Liquorland for these delicious Peronis that I'm drinking. Thank you very much. Wait, Derek's flying high with the Sainers. Oh, no. Sainers are doing pretty good. Sainers doing pretty oh, good. Oh, look at him. Get- Mason Cox. Nice and smug. <laughs> <laughs> Pies, Pies, Pies show on Monday is going to be in here Mason Cox is going to be in If Saints get up Derek, you better be in full regalia You better be in full regalia Just full St Kill to get head to toe Go, I, I like seeing the Saints do well all of a sudden I'm, I'm yeah, it's good. slightly into it Yeah yeah. Ross is a pretty good coach I don't like saying it I but he is. don't like Ross Anyway uh, Thanks as always everyone Thanks for listening Up the planes Go the- oh, oh, sorry I have one thing I need to pick oh, up no. on what? Why is your jumper for the Anzac Day round got a bomber on it? Your jumper has a bomber on it. That is the design. Yeah. Why? I hit up Purdy. Why? Well, you got to sell your planes merch. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so you're putting it on Melbourne stuff I said, now. Purdy, help a brother out. Get the get the bomb get get, get the get the planes help on. Help the sash out. Oh no! I just I just found that really really strange. That you nah, have, you I have what is essentially the logo of another club on there. Yeah, it is. Uh... Yeah. Like, imagine if we just, like, brought out a Guernsey for, I don't know, let's say Dream Time, and it had, a like, you know, a hawk on it or something. Like I don't know. I, I The one the last thing I'll say on that is, like... I'm sure it's got meaning you probably, Of course, it's got an amazing meaning. Like, the only one of the only reasons we sit on this land and we have all our freedoms and our autonomy and the ability to do a podcast right now and talk absolute nonsense is because of all those people that have sacrificed their lives. Yes. But I, I just feel like... 
they're running out of designs. Mm. Like, and they're just getting to this point where they're like, shit, what do we come up for this year? I, I, I actually think we don't mind ran it. ran out a long, long time ago because we just read yeah. it. Just on that, though, I love Anzac Day and the. The Collingwood Essendon game, biggest biggest mm. game outside of the grand final or final series. It's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. I love watching that clash. But to be a part of it the night before, we talk about it on our show like it's an absolute privilege. Mm. Yeah, like we love playing Richmond on that night now. Do you know? We're just happy to be a part of it. I'm not sure which club it was. One of the NRL clubs did a design for you know Anzac Day, mm. and it had like an image of like some soldiers on it, and then someone pulled it up that apparently it was a photo of American soldiers in Afghanistan. It wasn't even Australian or New Whoa! Zealanders. <laughs> what? Just did a Google job. Yeah, apparently. So yeah, Fucking some hell. real NRL areas. Sort there. yourselves out, NRL. Um, but yeah. Anyway, go planes. Uh, looking forward to a great weekend. Um, yeah, gather round, everyone. Come, yeah, gather come, around. gather round us. Yeah, Clayton yeah. Oliver, he's the goat. Gather. Bye. Bye.